In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, peace be with you. And with your spirit. Please be seated for a moment. It is my great honor to welcome all of you to the installation of Bishop Joseph Brennan as the new bishop of this Diocese of Fresno. What a great day for the Church of Fresno. On behalf of our local church, we welcome in a special way Archbishop Christopher Pierre, Apostolic Nuncio to the United States. Welcome, Archbishop. <laughs> we also especially welcome uh, Cardinal Roger Mahoney, Archbishop Emeritus of Los Angeles. Welcome, Your Eminence. I also want to welcome my brother bishops, priests, deacons, religious, and all the faithful, and especially the family and friends of Bishop Brenner. Welcome to you all. <clears throat> Bienvenidos todos a esta celebración eucarística en la cual el obispo Joseph Brenner es instalado como el nuevo obispo de esta iglesia local de la diócesis de Fresno. Now, I would like to ask Archbishop Christoph, Christoph Pierre to read the apostolic letter of appointment from Pope Francis. Your Eminence, Cardinal Mahoney, Your Excellency Archbishop Gomez, Your Excellency Bishop Brennan, Your Excellency Bishop Ochoa, my brothers as bishops and bishops, dear priests, deacons, consecrated religious, and lay faithful of the Church in Fresno, California, dear friends. In his farewell homily to the people of Los Angeles, Bishop Brennan said, the best job in the world is being an auxiliary bishop. <laughs> but now, the Holy Father has called him to a new responsibility, to shepherd the people of God as the Bishop of Fresno. Your Excellency, your episcopal motto is Caritas Christi Urget Nos, the charity of Christ urges us on. I am happy you took yours from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians rather than from the Divine Comedy, <laughs> where Dante suggests another, Lasciate ogni speranza, voi cintrate. This is a bit old Italian, isn't it? <laughs> Abandon all hope, ye, yeah, you enter here. That's a bit old English. <laughs> Yours, the charity of Christ urges us on, is a fitting motto when we consider the setting of this ceremony. This church of St. Anthony of Padua, a saint who said, the breath of charity widens the narrow heart of sinners. It's a beautiful sentence. Yes, the Holy Father has called you to bring God's mercy and love to the church of Fresno. And it is your love for Christ and his love for you that will sustain you in this new mission, to be the shepherd of this flock. In addressing the American bishops during his pastoral visit to the United States, Pope Francis said, I quote, you are bishops of the church, shepherds appointed by God to feed this flock. Our greatest joy is to be shepherds and only shepherds, pastors, with undivided hearts 
and selfless devotion. We need to preserve this joy and never let ourselves be robbed of it. My dear friends, in this beautiful setting where both charity and joy abound today, His Excellency Joseph Vincent Brennan is going to be solemnly installed as the sixth Bishop of Fresno. Your Excellency, we thank you for your generosity in answering the call to serve. I was a witness of it when I called you in the name of the Pope. And we assure you of our prayers, especially through the intercession of our Blessed Mother, as the start of this month of May and St. Joseph, your, her husband, and your patron. We promise you our support as you teach, govern, and sanctify in the example of Christ, the Good Shepherd. We are confident that through your faithful daily ministry to the Church in Fresno, now being entrusted to your pastoral care and through your witness to the community at large, you will, in the words of the Holy Father, from that same address, be a shepherd who raises his gaze constantly toward the horizon which God opens before us and which surpasses all that we can foresee or plan. Before I read the Apostolic Letter of Appointment, I wish to thank, in a special way, Bishop Armando Ochoa, who served as a bishop here for the past seven years. Where is he, by the way? Thank you, Bishop Armando. You have been a good shepherd. As Bishop Brennan said at the press conference on the day of his appointment, I quote, I quote you. <laughs> listen, listen. A million thanks, a million thanks, Lord, for this diocese. A million thanks, Lord, for the service of your servant, Armando. Thank you, Bishop Armando. And now, with great joy, I will read for you the English translation of the Apostolic Letter by which our Holy Father appointed His Excellency Joseph Vincent Brennan, Bishop of Fresno. Francis, Bishop, Servant of the Servants of God. To our venerable brother, Joseph Brennan, until now titular Bishop of Trophimiana, and also Auxiliary of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, appointed Ordinary of Fresno, greetings and apostolic blessing. Let us give praise to the merciful Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for he has revealed the mysteries of the kingdom to the childlike and deems it worthy to assign to the devotedness of our ministry the care of our flock promising that those who go the right way is salvation. Relying on such a great hope, which for us is both a support and a consolation in our responsibility of governing the Church universal, it is with paternal affection that we turn our thoughts to the spiritual needs of the flock of Fresno, which, owing to the resignation of its former ordinary, our venerable brother, Armando Ochoa, currently awaits its new shepherd. Consequently, we look to you, venerable brother, who, having accomplished so much in the exercise of your pastoral office as auxiliary bishop in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, have manifested sound judgment and have clearly shown yourself to be one who is endowed with both the human and spiritual qualities which, 
in our estimation, render you as one who is suitable for undertaking this new office. Therefore, upon consultation with the Congregation for Bishops, by the fullness of our apostolic authority, we release you from the bond of the above-mentioned titular church and the office of auxiliary, and we appoint you Bishop of Fresno, conferring upon you all the due rights and imposing the obligations which are connected with this mandate. It is our earnest desire that you inform the clergy and the people of this ecclesial community above, about our decree, and we exhort them to welcome you as their father, teacher, and guardian of souls. Finally, venerable brother, as we entrust these, these greater responsibilities to you, may Almighty God grant to you and the flock entrusted to your pastoral care his mercy and superabundant grace, so that showing continually the example of charity, you both may profess that the corruption of death no longer has any power over mankind thanks to the world who dwells among you through his one body. Given at Rome, at St. Peter's, on the fifth day of the month of March, in the year of the Lord 2019, the sixth of our pontificate, and it is signed Francis. I will ask him if he agrees with that. Come, come. <laughs> Listen, please. Most Reverend Joseph Brennan, you have heard the letter of His Holiness Pope Francis. You are called, you are called by the Holy Spirit to serve Almighty God and the people of this diocese of Fresno in faith and in love as their shepherd. Are you willing to accept this see in the tradition of the apostolic faith of our church? With faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, with the love of God in my heart, I do accept the pastoral care of the people of God of the Diocese of Fresno. I resolve to serve faithfully the spiritual needs of this local church. Thanks be to God.
mum say a thank you? And mum, and mine, thank you. Thank you, brother. I suppose so. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you both. Thank you. Welcome, fathers. Thank you, Larry. Yes. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Please, bless you both. Thank you. Okay, we're up. Yes, thank you. Thank you both. Thank you.
Let us pray. Oremos. Almighty, ever-living God, who raised up the bishop, St. Athanasius, as an outstanding champ champion of your son's divinity, mercifully grant that rejoicing in his teaching and his protection, we may never cease to grow in knowledge and love of you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lectura de los Hechos de los Apóstoles En aquellos días, los guardias condujeron a los apóstoles ante el Cenedrín, y el sumo sacerdote los reprendió diciéndoles, Les hemos prohibido enseñar en nombre de ese Jesús. Sin embargo, ustedes han llenado a Jerusalén con sus enseñanzas, y quieren hacernos responsables de la sangre de ese hombre. Pedro y los otros apóstoles replicaron, Primero hay que obedecer a Dios, y luego a los hombres. El Dios de nuestros padres resucitó a Jesús, a quien ustedes dieron muerte colgándolo de la cruz. La mano de Dios lo exaltó, y lo ha hecho jefe y salvador, para dar a Israel la gracia de la conversión y el perdón de los pecados. Nosotros somos testigos de todo esto, y también lo es el Espíritu Santo, que Dios ha dado a los que lo obedecen. Esta respuesta los exasperó, y decidieron matarlos. Palabra de Dios. destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress, he rescues the 
those who are crushed in spirit, he saves. The Lord redeems the lives of his servants. No one incurs guilt who takes refuge in him. The Pagbasa sa unang sulat ni San Pedro Apostol. <coughs> mga pinakamamahal, sa mga matandang kapiling ninyo ay may ipapayo ako. Akong matandang gaya nila at saksi sa mga hirap ni Kristo. At kasama sa kaluwalhatiang ipahahayag. Alagaan ninyo ang kawa ng Diyos na ipinagkatiwala sa inyo. Inyong pamamahalaan, hindi sa sapilitan, kundi kusang loob na naayon sa Diyos. Hindi dahil sa nakahihiyang pakinabang, kundi ng may magandang kalooban. Huwag din kayong mabalasik sa inyong mga pinamamahalaan, kundi maging udiran kayo sa kawan. At pagparito ng Pangulong Pastol, tatanggap kayo ng di lumilipas na korona ng kaluwalhatian. Ang Salita ng Diyos, The Word of the Lord. Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. The one who comes from above all is above all. The one who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of earthly things. But the one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever does accept his testimony certifies that God is trustworthy. For the one whom God sent speaks the words of God. He does not ration his gift of the Spirit. The Father loves the Son and has given everything over to him. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God remains upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated and fasten your seat belts. <laughs> it's going to be a bumpy ride for the next few minutes. <laughs> well, you've learned something about your bishop. He's a crybaby. Uh, but, <laughs> but, but just a fair warning, don't... Uh, don't confuse emotion with weakness, okay? Because I, I, I'm not a pushover, but <laughs> and I have a few corrections to make. And I, I'm almost a little reluctant and, uh, to do that, but uh, I'm sorry, Your, Your Excellency, Archbishop Pierre. Where'd you go? Oh, there you are. Yes. <laughs> If I had known that you were listening so carefully to my homilies, I would have prepared them a lot more (laughs) thoroughly. And I corrected Archbishop Gomez a few weeks ago when uh, he, because he's very fond of saying that being an auxiliary bishop is the best job in the world. But it's really not true, and I'm going to say now what I said then. The best job in the world is being auxiliary bishop for Jose Gomez. It it really is. (laughs) <laughs> so I suppose the second best job in the world is being Bishop of Fresno, right? So <laughs> <laughs> so he was listening. He does quote me rather accurately. Thank you, Archbishop uh, Pierre. Entonces, un millón de gracias. Yes, a million thanks. Un millón de gracias al Papa en primer lugar. No sé la, la razón por la cual lo hizo, pero es, es el jefe, ¿verdad? Y, eh, hemos de obedecerle. No hay, <ríe> no hay ningún recurso, ¿verdad? Y agradecimiento también dirigido al, al arzobispo Pierre, al arzobispo Gómez, y todos ustedes los aquí presentes, y, y los sacerdotes aquí, el, 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 yo soy de Fresno, y algunos de mis amigos que... Se viene, pues vienen de lejos en aquella tierra tan extraña de Los Angeles, right? <laughs> that strange land of Los Angeles. Some of my priest friends have, have come from there. But I have to admit the presbyterate here in Fresno has been so warm and welcoming. In fact, almost without exception, they would come up to me and say this, this past few days that here in Fresno during the summer, it never gets above 85 degrees. <laughs> No, they told me. They, they've assured me. So that's so good to know. So I don't, I don't know what else they're feeding me, but we'll, we'll see. 
<laughs> I will find out. Now you'll find out soon enough. When I was a little kid, and my brothers and sisters could relate to this so easily, and some of you could as well, if you had parents that were part of the, the greatest generation, that, that went through that experience that, that we came to know as the Second World War, and we think of the fighters and the flyers who participated in, in that struggle against evil, against fascism, against imperialism, and we need to also remember that there was a home front. I remember my mother and father back home in Van Nuys, in the a different valley, the San Fernando Valley. And I'm very happy to still be a valley boy, it's just a different valley. Uh, <laughs> Mom, would da Mom and Dad would speak about how it was not easy here, back home in the United States during those years, how there was rationing that you had coupons because things were limited. You had a coupon for a certain amount of meat or butter and milk that you could buy. There were even coupons for gasoline that was, it just was limited because everything was going toward the war effort. People learned how to do and how to do without in those days. Rationing. We heard that word in the gospel just a few minutes ago. And this is John speaking of the Lord Jesus. Juan, hablando del Señor Jesús, diciendo que no se nos ofrece su Espíritu Santo a medida. He doesn't ration the Holy Spirit. When the Lord gives us a gift, in particular when he gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit, he rations nothing. He holds nothing back. It is pure, total gift. Es una entrega total de la cual San Juan está hablando referente al Señor Jesús. Nothing is held back when God gives a gift. The problem with us sometimes is that we do the rationing. <laughs> Can you imagine? In fact, you can't imagine, but I'm going to say it anyway. Can you imagine the Lord above saying, I only have a certain amount of grace to go around, so I'm going to dole it out little by little, each one uh, according to their needs. You know, whenever, when you need it, uh, there'll be some, but, but again, it's not, there's no infinite supply here. It's going to run out sooner or later. Can you imagine that? Que el Señor diciéndonos que hay una cierta cantidad de gracia, Y se, se va a acabar algún día? Sería imposible, imposible imaginarlo. Because we know that's not how God operates. God operates with total abundance and total gift. We have to learn from that not to ration that gift of grace. Not to be afraid. But we are because we're human. We're afraid of the future. We're afraid to start something new. We're afraid to leave family and friends and a home behind. We're afraid of what people will think, what it will be like. We're afraid to stand up sometimes for what we truly believe in. We're afraid to be that countercultural sign in the world that we live in. And so appropriate that we are celebrating today a, a marvelous saint. St. Anastasius, he bridged the third and the fourth century. It was a long time ago. He was a courageous, courageous man, a courageous bishop. The, the year 325, he's a, he's a very young deacon, 27 years old, accompanying his bishop to an ecumenical council with the Emperor Constantine presiding. No pressure there. <laughs> and with his bishop, Alexander, Already learning how to be a courageous young man, he would grow up to be a courageous old man, dealing with four different Roman emperors and being exiled from his post as a bishop five times. Why? Because he spoke the truth. Why? Because he spoke with courage. Why? Because he defended the faith against a, a, an awful heresy called Arianism. In a nutshell, the denial of the divinity of Christ, the, denial of, 
of the Trinity. So for the Arians, Jesus was not consubstantial nor co-eternal with the Father, more creature than creator. And Anastasius, leading the way with others, said, no, that's not the truth. It's Father, Son, and Spirit. It is this Trinity. It is the Word made flesh, Jesus, fully human and fully divine. El Señor Jesús, Dios verdadero, Dios hecho hombre, Dios presente. Y sabemos es lo que significa su título, Emmanuel, ¿verdad? Dios con nosotros. Dios, el Señor, compartiendo con nosotros en todo, menos en el pecado, dice San Pablo en otra lectura, sharing with us in everything, everything that's good about our human nature, everything, sharing everything except sin. Jesus cried too, so I'm in pretty good company. So, he did. And here we are in this marvelous place on this wonderful day and we are asking also to be countercultural in our living out of the gospel each and every one of us see i'm here because the pope couldn't be here today <laughs> and the priests are in the parishes because i can't be there either and the reason that those of us who dress funny once in a while in church are here at all, ever, is to serve the priesthood of the faithful, to serve together, to learn together how to live this gospel life as deeply, as fervently, and as joyfully as we possibly can. I have a serious side. It doesn't show itself very often, but I have a serious side. The silly side shows itself more often than not. And I've had some incredible, wonderful secretaries here throughout the years. I think four of them are here. I'll try and go in order. Teresa Monson, are you here? Where are you? Stand up, okay. Then I think the next one, don't, don't clap yet. Uh, <laughs> Christine Moreno, are you here? Christine, don't be bashful, stand up, wonderful. And then, let's see, I think the next one would be Monica Tabuada, who was my secretary for these last three and a half years. And then there's a brand new one, but I'm going to embarrass her anyway. Mary Cardona, you stand up too. In fact, please come forward. I know, I know, I'm doing it again. <laughs> so get used to it. Please. Don't cry on me. I, I, you know, I'm going to start crying again, right here in front. Right here in front. Okay. Three of these women I've, I've known and worked with so wonderfully and so well over these years. And there's another one, Jesse Bosley, who is like 92 years old, who couldn't be here today. Otherwise, she would have been my secretary at St. Linus, where I spent 16 years of my life as a priest most time I'll ever spend anywhere, including this. Yeah. <laughs> so you represent all of the women who are here, all of the women in our church who work so beautifully with us, who keep us in line and, and keep us on track. And when I'm having a bad day yesterday, getting me back in the groove, and just, I'm indebted to you, the, you know, the. The word secretary contains the word secret, and I know that's a bad word in the church these days because we're, we, well, because we have to be, you know, uh, transparent, right? We got everybody wants us to be transparent. Well, we are, but there's some things that, that in charity need to be kept, you know, silent and, and quiet, frankly. And secretaries learn what to do in that. And when it needs to be shouted from the rooftops, you know what to do then as well. So I'm indebted to each and every one of you because I love you as individuals and I love you because of who you represent. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
go back to your places and get to work. Okay. Okay. Now, I mentioned that, and I'm going to get to the really silly part. And I, I have a question of Archbishop Pierre and Archbishop Gomez. Uh, only the Pope can fire me, right? Yeah? Okay. okay, good. Great, then I will tell this story. It was about five years ago, and I was Vicar General uh, for Archbishop Gomez, and I have four words to say about that job. Bad job, great boss. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. Okay, Ray, you, you know what, what I'm talking about. I hope you can say great boss someday, but uh, you know, that, the, the, the jury is out on that one. So I made sure that Archbishop Gomez was not in the office at the time, because my office was pretty close to his, and I, I was, I, he couldn't be in the office for what I was going to do, because Christine Moreno, my secretary, executive assistant at the time, when she would go out to lunch, she had this big sign on a big chain that said, out to lunch. So I figured one morning, I'm going to have some fun with this. I took the sign, and I put it around my neck <laughs> without saying a word. I just walked around the fifth floor, and I'd go up to the, you know, the seventh floor, and, and just to see what response I would get. So some people looked at it and just rolled their eyes, and, and as if to say, yes, he's out to lunch, all right. <laughs> And others just saw it for the, just the, the fun, joyful thing that it was meant to be. My motto is, Caritas Christi Urgent Nos. But it could just as well have been, be joyful, be joyful whenever you can, and be serious only whenever you must. There are times when we must, but only do it when you must. Anything other than that is not from the Holy One. Amen? Amen. Mis hermanos, en comunión con la gran multitud que está delante de Dios, ahora ofrecemos estas oraciones por la necesidad de todos. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and our Bishop, Joseph Brennan, for all bishops, priests, deacons, and religious, that they continue to lead the church with courage. ตัวตุนตะวะฮอลือตัวเกนเชงปาลูกกองตองเฮากะเลอซอเชอซอเกจิญาตอไซลูฮึฉีลอเจลอซอฮึฉีเทียมัวเกลูมูปาซอตูญ
Fou, Sangli, Challengeable. para que os jovens estejam dispostos a aceitar o chamamento de Deus ao sacerdócio, à vida religiosa e aos ministérios leigos na Igreja. Obispo Armando Ochoa, le damos las gracias y oramos para que sea bendecido con buena salud y larga vida al convertirse en obispo emérito. We pray to the Lord. Para sa mga mahihirap, sa mga naaapi, sa mga may sakit, at sa lahat ng nagdurusa upang matuklasan nila ang kaluwagan, kaligtasan, at kapayapaan. ta hãy cầu nguyện cho các tiến hữu đã qua đời, đặc biệt cho các vị chủ chăn đã lìa cõi thế của giáo phận chúng ta, cũng như những người thân đã ra đi trong gia đình của chúng ta và những anh chị em mà chúng ta yêu mến. Xin Chúa ban cho tất cả được hạnh phúc nước trời. We pray to the Lord. Faithful God, trusting in your grace, we ask you to hear our prayers and answer every need through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given. Human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God.
pray, brothers, sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look, O Lord, upon the offerings we present to you in commemoration of St. Athanasius. And may witnessing to your truth bring salvation to those who profess, as he did, an unblemished faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Pray, brothers, sisters. I'm sorry, I did that. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Athanasius, you bid your church rejoice. So too, you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching. And keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. or be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of
therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit, in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an, an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles, with St. Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely your unfailing help. In this sacrifice for reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family when you have summoned before you in your compassion and merciful Father, guide to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. with courage, with confidence, and I dare say with joy, we pray together in words that Jesus himself has taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and ever forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
Say 
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, Almighty God, that the true divinity of your only begotten Son, which we firmly profess with St. Athanasius, may through this sacrament ever give us life and protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Are there any announcements? Second collection for the Bishop Brennan Vacation Fund. No? What? <laughs> so we're done? So it's time for some fun after with the final blessing. <laughs> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. some lovely friends of mine from St. Linus. Clem and Maureen, front and center. Yeah, you heard me. 
It's their 55th wedding anniversary today. Oh, Step up here. So I've known them since 1983. And they're lovely friends and a lovely presence at St. Linus, where, where our family is in so many ways, too. So, Clem, repeat after me. Look at her, but don't look at her. <laughs> I, Clem, take you, Maureen, to be my wife. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad times, in sickness and in health. I will love you and I will honor you all the days of my life. Now, Maureen, you repeat after, look at him. <laughs> I, Maureen, take you, Clem, to be my husband. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad times, in sickness and in health. I will love you and I will honor you all the days of my life. May the Lord in his goodness strengthen your consent again after 55 years and and what God has joined, men must not divide. And Clem, you may kiss the bride. <laughs> now go in peace, glorifying, <laughs> glorifying the Lord by your life.
nos llama a ser el hilo y no milados por su luz. Somos muchos y diversos, cada quien que no memorias, que salimos al encuentro, a escribir la nueva historia.